So um, I'm going to talk about a few scenarios where local therapy has been used um, in non-small cell lung cancer for the management of oligometastatic disease. And I'm going to really focus on the first two topics, consolidation and oligoprogression. And how do I define consolidation? I view consolidation and the field views consolidation as patients who've got, who have metastatic disease, they receive some frontline systemic therapy, in your case, TKIs, or targeted therapy of some form or another, or immunotherapy for other patient populations in non-small cell, or you know, in small percentages now cytotoxic chemotherapy. After about three months, we, we re-image the patients to look if they, to see if they have uh, limited sites of metastatic disease that would make them amenable to radiation. Then those patients would receive radiation or undergo surgery to those metastatic sites, as well as treatment of the primary, and, and the patients would move on to continue systemic therapy. And the idea was, could we improve survival outcomes, progression-free survival and overall survival by adding radiation at that point in time after they've received some form of induction uh, systemic therapy. So this is a, you know, a complicated slide. I think you guys will all get access to this slide set, but there were multiple studies that asked this very question. When we add radiation in a randomized fashion, can we improve progression-free survival? And the three arrows allude to three studies that included non-small cell lung cancer patients where use of radiation improved progression-free survival significantly, uh, in many ways, threefold increases in PFS. And then in two of the studies, the, the top one and the bottom one, Gomez and Palma, they also showed an overall survival benefit with the addition of that uh, local therapy. Now, the first study, the Gomez study, did include patients with targetable mutations. It was about uh, for instance, EGFR was about 12% of patients. And the, even in the target therapy group, they saw a benefit with the use of local therapy. So this gave us some signal, early phase studies, not very large, that the use of radiation in a randomized fashion could actually help with not just progression-free survival, but overall survival. So this is a very interesting and exciting set of studies supporting our, uh, our field's hypotheses. None of these studies, of course, incorporated immunotherapy. They were preceding that era. So as we started thinking about immunotherapy, and I'm just going to get to this explanation as a paradigm of understanding how we've started moving in the same directions with um, targeted therapy, specific targetable disease. Um, immunotherapy shows has shown some benefit in some early studies. Um, but then there have been other studies, like this other one that came out of the NCI, where there was not a significant benefit. So the jury is going to be out. I'm running this trial, LU002, which is asking this very specific question. In the setting of what we call consolidation, does the addition of radiation help survival? And hopefully we'll, we'll know that in a, uh, the interim analysis will be done in a few weeks, which will give us a go, no go to the, the phase three portion. But in parallel, there have been a number of studies that are looking at local therapy in the setting of a uh, disease that's targetable. And so at UT Southwestern, we did a study that was with the City of Hope. It hasn't been published yet, but in a single arm phase two study, uh, we finished enrollment and we're doing the analysis. Patients that had EGFR mutated disease started with osimertinib. And then after about eight weeks of therapy, as long as they had limited number of sites of disease, we gave radiation to all of those sites and then the patients continue, continued on osimertinib. And this, this study, the, the key point of this study was to understand whether the benefit, whether there would be like a benefit in terms of progression-free survival, progression survival and overall survival compared to historical outcomes in patients who receive, or receive osimertinib alone. We did a parallel sister study with um, ALK rearranged disease where we combined, in this case, seritinib again, um, but this case it was a phase two trial where we had um, patients that had ALK naive disease and then patients that also had ALK resistant disease, um, inhibitor resistant disease, and we basically re-imaged and then did radiation again to all of these inter, uh, patients and all of their disease. And again, the idea is to see in the setting of uh, treatment naive patients or patients who receive therapy, whether the radiation will help with progression-free survival. Again, we finished enrollment on this study and hope to, to get some information further. 
There had been two other studies um, out of MD Anderson looking at a similar concept. Start with the systemic therapy in the form of osimertinib. Um, in the top study, it's a randomized phase two study. Um, and they're still, um, I think they've completed enrollment and they're going to wait about a year and a half before they, uh, for a follow-up uh, to look and see whether local therapy helps. The idea is to synergize with the systemic therapy and improving survival outcomes. And they also have a phase one study um, looking at local therapy in the setting of patients receiving brigatinib. Now, now, some people will ask, what about doing this up front? What about adding radiation up front in patients that have oligometastatic disease? Can we add radiation and see if in EGFR mutated patients, for instance, this study was published in the JNCI and see if these patients can actually uh, you know, do well. And this study was really exciting. It was published in just a, you know, uh, in 2022. Um, reported out in 2023, but the idea was that the addition of radiation up front to metastatic disease and to the primary improved progression-free survival and overall survival. Why are we not using this for every patient now? Well, part of the reason is, is that if you look at the first, you know, nine to 12 months of the study and you're looking at these Kaplan-Meier curves, you see a very flat line. That, that was a little bit concerning to a number of us in the field in that we expect patients to rec who receive TKIs to certainly have very significant, durable, progression-free survival. But, you know, we would expect some significant events within the first year, and there really were not that many in this, in this trial. So, you know, we are waiting for larger studies to be conducted and completed before I think we change our practice patterns with the, this patient population.